welcome to this week's piece. Well, I picked this one up because I'm a glutton for punishment. Just kidding. I love the legs and I love the mirror. I just really like this style of dresser. They typically do pretty well for me. This one was just in a little bit of rough shape. But nothing that we can't fix, as usual. So we've got a broken leg, scratches all over, a little break in the drawer. The top is not great. <laughs> um... But, I mean, you know, there's potential. You can see it, right? It's just, I really love these kind. It is missing one pull, so that was a little upsetting. I do like to keep original hardware on these things. In this case, I'm not going to be able to, but... The top two drawers had some ink staining in them, which is fine. The bottom two drawers were lovely, so there wasn't anything to do with those, but, you know, it's, they're a little sticky. It's fine. We'll get her all fixed up and she will be back in her prime. I really love these drawer stops. They were like um, rounds with dowels in them and they worked so well. I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Um, since I don't have the rounded top, I do have some dowels. So that's what I'm going to use to fix those later. And then I just kind of went through, inspected the piece, fixed any little areas that I could quickly fix and get clamped so that they were all dry and ready to go for all the rest of the prep. So there were a few spots like this kind of all over the place that I just, like I said, glued up, clamped, and that way I can move on to other things. And these dowels I had in my shop fit perfectly, so that was really awesome. I just took my little hammer, and that was still just a little too high, so I turned it sideways and hammered it in that way just to give me a little more space. Uh, took my pull saw and cut off the excess, and it worked really well. Mind you, it's a slight difference off because I don't have the larger round on the outside, but that little section worked out really well. Well, this leg I was really excited to do. So... I haven't ever fully carved a leg. I've done some other carving. I'm still not great at it, but you know, practice makes perfect and all that. So what I did here is I cut off all of the broken part. Um, I did leave just a little section of the hole in case I decided I wanted to go ahead and put casters back into these legs. I wasn't sure, so I just made sure that I left that part. Also, as much as you can leave behind of the original wood, I think the better. So I'm just giving myself a flat surface to work on to glue a block into. So this is just a little maple block, which is what this dresser leg is made out of. Um, it is about the right size and I cut it with my miter saw to make it fit the right size that I need and to make sure everything was flat and then put some glue in there threw the block on and then clamped it overnight And you know I move around a bit, so while that's all setting up, I can go ahead and do some scuff sanding on the drawers and get everything kind of moving along with the rest of the piece, everything I can do. I did see in the inside of that drawer, you just can't really get out ink stains that are that big, so it is what it is. They'll get liners later. So for this part, I'm just taking off the large parts of the block that I don't need anymore. And then I'm using a pencil to kind of show me where I need to make my other cuts and how far I need to chisel down to. 
and just kind of guiding myself. I'll use a larger chisel at first and then the saw to break off those bigger pieces. And it does look really terrible at first because it's just taking off chunks of wood. And I just go back and forth between the chisel and the saw until I'm somewhere close. It's never perfect initially. Not that it is perfect at the end, but it's pretty good. And I'm just trying to match up everything from using the back side of the leg kind of as the template to do the front side. So I'm just working around as I go. And this did take quite a while. So once I get off the mass of it, I can go in with my smaller chisels. I wish I would have shown a picture of my carving set because there's a lot of like um, beveled edges and just different shapes that you can work with. So they help me get the grooves that match the rest of the leg to go down and to help me round out the little decorative piece at the bottom. There's just a lot of stuff that you can work with with a little carving set and they're very inexpensive and I don't carve all the time, so I didn't need a really expensive set. I just needed something that I could sharpen if I needed to. And then of course I started sanding here and then I'd go back in with the chisels if I saw any spot that needed to be kind of touched up. And the sanding I was doing with a pretty, I would say this is about 80 grit initially. And then I went through all the way up to 220 to get everything smoothed out. And then for those little insets there, I just wrapped the sandpaper around a screwdriver and ran it up that way because it was essentially the same size. So here I'm using dark walnut stain. This is not the end stain that I ended up going with. I ended up going with Kona. So this is where I'm at here. And then I decided that I wanted it a little darker after I had done the top. Now the top of this, I just decided to remove. It was lifting in just a ton of areas. It had two pretty large chunks taken out of it. And I know you guys have seen me do veneer repairs. So this is just the route I went. Um, I did take this piece. This is 60 grit paper, by the way, to start with. Um, I did take this piece down to California. So this is the first shot in California. All the other work was done in Portland in my shop. And now we're in California at my parents' house. So I started out with 60 and then I moved it all the way up through the papers to 220. And then here's where I said I decided to go the Kona stain route. And I actually really loved this top. I thought it was beautiful. I think it's funny when you see veneer and you assume that the wood underneath is not great because they veneered over the top. But yeah, I really thought this was a lovely top. Now to fix the drawer corner, since that's going to be painted, I wasn't worried about doing it, doing a wood repair here. So I just took some quick wood, you mix it together and you just kind of shape it and mold it to your piece. It doesn't have to be perfect where you get it now. You kind of want it to be a little bit proud of the surface. So that way you can go through later and sand it back and get it the perfect shape that you need. Now I will let this kind of set up for a minute and then I can go through with my blade and cut off the excess and that will save me sanding time later. Four 
for the body of the piece. That's the drawer fronts and the two lower drawers, the inset portions, as well as the sides. I'm going to do a ray stencil. So I almost always use my quick set for this. It's super easy to use. You just add a little bit of water to the consistency that you like and get your stencil up and then just spatula it on. Super easy to use. You can do like thin coats or you can make them like a little thicker and more textured. There's just a lot of different ways you can go about doing this. You do have to work fairly quickly because it dries fast. At least the formula that I get dries pretty quick. And then you have to wash your stencil pretty soon after you're done because you don't want it to set up on your stencil. Now when I do the sides like this, I will do the top section on this side, pull it off, do the top section on the other side, and then move around. That way when I go back to do the lower section on this side, the top is already dry and I'm not messing up my stencil. Now that drawer corner is fully dried now, so I'm just taking a chisel. Again, this is another step just to help me from having to sand for an hour. Um, I'm just taking off all the extra bits, kind of getting it flush with the drawer, and then I can just take some sandpaper to do the finishing touches on it. I'm sealing the top with my Chalk Mountain Satin Poly. I like to seal my tops first. That way, if I get any paint or anything on them during the process of doing the rest of the dresser, I can just wipe it off because it's fully sealed and protected from the poly. I do like to get quite a bit on it first, and then I will go through and smooth it out with long, smooth brush strokes. This isn't a product that I typically use. This is just the Rust-Oleum White Spray Primer. The only reason I'm doing this is because I left my Mellow White at the shop, so I had to order some more for down here in California. And so while I was waiting for that to come, I didn't want this to not be getting any work done to it. So I just did a quick coat of that and then it will speed things along. And here I'm just using my lavender wax and I'm waxing all of the slides. Um, I also do the undersides of the drawers and just the inner part to nourish the wood and it just smells lovely. And I know there's some of you that don't like the smell of lavender. That's okay. You can pick another scent for yours. So I'm taking Mellow White as my base and I'm going to go through and do the entire dresser with a coat of this Mellow White. Now for the fun part. So we're gonna do kind of a swirly blend here. I've got aquamarine, wisteria, and pastel peach. 
And so I'm gonna go in with my base coat of the Mellow White, and then I'm going to take just soft, soft blends of these colors and throw them kind of all over the place. So I did it to the insets here. I'm not doing it to any of the trim pieces. I'm just doing it over the race stencil portion. So this is super fast, but here I'm gonna show you kind of a little closer up and easier to see. So again, it's the base coat of the Mellow White. I do make sure that I get the lip inside of the drawers just so that when you pull out the drawers, you're still happy looking at it. So to do these style blends, I start off with, of course, my base of Mellow White. I make sure it stays wet, I keep my water bottle on hand, and then I will have a different brush for each additional color, and I will just slowly start working the color in. So you're going to get the highest concentration of color, of course, the first place you drop your brush down. And then you can feather out the edges as you go through. So if you run your brush through the color again, it's already picked up some white and it's going to soften the color out even more. So depending on the kind of blend you want, how much color you want, you'll kind of either avoid the center part where you put the brush down or you'll go back through it to soften it out. And that's just a personal preference. I wanted these very, very light. So I'm going through and then I'll actually run through and smooth them out with the brush as well. And it's the same with the purple. So I get it on in a certain section and then I'll go through and blend out the edges fully. And then I can smooth them out just by doing those long strokes if I need to. You just kind of go back and forth and figure out what you like. You can always go in and add more color later if you want more. And you can always go back in with the white and soften things out if you need to as well. So this is super easy just to go kind of back and forth and get something that you really like. You do have to make sure that you're keeping your paint wet though. So that spray bottle is super, super handy in this. And I'm using the lightest touch with my brush. You don't wanna be heavy handed with the brush because it can run the risk of lifting your paint again. So you're going super, super soft. Plus the softer you are with your brush, the softer your blend is going to be. Now there's no rhyme or reason to my color placement, it's just wherever I want to put them essentially. As I go through and start putting things down, I decide you know, if I want to add peach in an opposite corner or if I want to do blue in the center. It's kind of just going through and looking at it and see kind of what makes you happy. Seal all that in, I'm going to take my Chalk Mountain Satin Poly, the Pastel Peach, and the Seashell Metallic from Rust-Oleum, and I'm mixing that together to create just a subtle, almost opalescent finish over the top of this. So when combined with the blended colors underneath, it does just the most beautiful thing ever. I love it so much. And then just the touch of Pastel Peach in there will tint the white all over the frame of the dresser as well. So it's sealing and also adding just another layer of awesomeness. 
And once that's all done, I'm just gonna add the hardware and this piece is completely finished. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Uprights and we've got our finished piece. Just kidding, it's coming. But I deleted my outro that I had, that I normally do. So this is what you get, it's fine, things happen. Sometimes I'm a spaz. Hi, they. But I did want to come on here and just thank you guys as always for being so incredible and I'm so thankful for you. So I wanted to do a fun thing like we did the last time I had a matching something that I did later on. I didn't mention it in the video what this was going to, but it has a matching piece with it. So the first person to guess what this goes to from one of my previous videos, I will send you a pull saw. It's my pull saw, the one that folds, that I keep in my purse sometimes, that it just is so handy. I love it. It's one of my most favorite tools. So first person to guess what this piece went to, I will send you a pull saw. It'll come directly from Amazon, so I'm not shipping it to you, but um, I will contact you and get your address and all that jazz. Um, I will usually do it through the comment that you responded to and let you know how we can exchange everything from there. That way there's no issues. And then if that person doesn't respond, oh, it'll move on to the next person who guessed first. So yeah. Otherwise y'all can just guess what it goes to. It's pretty easy. So you shouldn't have any trouble. But anyways, I just want to say thank you again. You guys are amazing and I will see you next time.